good morning students today we start off with the poem the height of the ridiculous now this particular poem is written by oliver wendell holmes let me first give you a little bit of information about the poet oliver wendell holmes was a physician and an american poet his time period is from 1809 to 1894 he was born in cambridge and he spent most of his time in boston he was friends with some other famous poets like raffle waldo emerson and henry wordsworth longfellow he is called a man of contrasts and contradictions and his life Oscill oscillated between reality and imagination. This particular poem, which we are going to do, "Height of Ridiculous," is also an imaginary situation which the poet builds up in the poem. A major part of his life was spent as a doctor and professor of the Harvard University, and his famous writings include "Old Ironside" and "The Breakfast Table." The title of this particular poem, children, is "The Height of the Ridiculous," meaning ridiculous, meaning funny. That which is funny, something that is too absurd to be accepted as true, too funny to believe. Ridiculous, too funny to believe. Now the theme of the poem revolves around. a situation or an incident where the poet composes a few lines of poetry the poem that the poet composes begins on a note of self praise where after composing a few lines in a wondrous joyous mood the poet compliments himself for having composed few lines which were very fun when he read these lines he was he could not control his laughter and after that he gives he hands over the poem to his servant and the consequence or the outcome of his servant reading that particular poem composed by the poet was that the servant began to laugh uncontrollably and he fell sick to such an extent that the poet had to take care of him for 10 days and nights the poet's experience of writing such a funny poem resulted in this particular experience of the servant okay laughing in an uncontrollable manner and falling sick and then he decides that he would never again compose or write poems again this particular poem is very funny yet very it's a simple poem composed very very artistically the central idea of the poem is an irony we talks about how too much of anything can be can have an inverse effect every anything or everything which a person does should be in within a certain limit the person who wrote the poem that is the poet himself the creator of the poem or the composer of the poem and the reader both had to suffer in different ways due to the ridiculous nature of the poem let's read the poem to find out what was the effect of that reading that particular poem on the poet's servant and what did the what was the final outcome of the poet's experience ridiculous too funny to believe i wrote some lines once on a time in a wondrous merry mood i wrote some lines meaning the poet composed i stands for the poet i composed some lines 
when i was in a wanderer that means delightful joyous merry mood and thought as usual men would say they were exceeding good the poet is praising himself he thought that whatever he had composed was really good so he compliments himself and he says that whatever i had composed i thought that people would like it and men would say that they were extremely good exceeding good means extremely good to an unusual degree good to an unusual degree the first four lines talks about the poem composed by the poet and the poet praising himself that the poem composed by him he thought was really good they were so pure so very pure i laughed as i would that after the poet composed the poem he read it again and he thought that it was very strange the line to the poem was so strange and he laughed as i would die i laughed as i would die albeit in a general way a sober man am i otherwise the poet by nature is a very clear headed person who is very serious not a person who is uh, who involves in humor or who keeps laughing but the very fact that a serious man like the poet laughed so much that he thought that he would die so the poet was filled with laughter and he could not control his laughter after he read the lines that he had composed sober here stands for being clear headed or serious or meanings are given some of them are not given so wondrous delightful exceeding extremely good to an unusual degree pure stands for strange albeit is although sober clear headed serious the rhyme scheme of the first four lines time mood say good mood and good mood is a state of mind mood and good rhyme with each other so the rhyme scheme which the poet has used throughout the poem is a b c b time a mood b c c mood and good rhyme so again b a b c b i called my servant and he came how kind it was of him to mind a slender man like me after the poet composed the poem what did he do he decided to call his servant and the servant came it was how kind it was of him to mind a slender man like me the poet here talks about the contrast between himself that is the narrator he himself and his servant the servant came how kind it was of him that is after the master had called called out to him immediately he entered and he says that i am a very slender man okay by stature he was very slim and slender on the other hand he of the mighty limb how was the servant he was hefty well built strong so it was a total contrast even the nature was different the servant was very very someone who enjoyed humor who had a terrific sense of humor and the poet himself was very clear headed and serious so the first eight lines we have two questions here on the right side in what frame of mind did the poet write some lines the poet composed some lines when he was in a on a in a wondrous merry mood what was the contrast in the narrator and his servant by nature how were they the poet himself was a very slender and slim statured person he was very serious and a sober man by nature on the other hand the servant was a very hefty person physically well built very strong and also he had a terrific sense of humor the poet composed the poem he read it he found it very funny 
called a servant and the servant immediately came and what was the instruction given by the poet to the servant these to the printer i explain and in my humorous way i add it as the trifling jest the will be the devil to pay so he gave the orders to the servant take these to the printer okay and the poet was even at that point of time when he handed over the lines to the the poem to the servant he was still laughing because he couldn't control his laughter still laughing and he added as a trifling jest that is trifling that which is of no importance very little importance jest is a small simple joke there will be the devil to pay now these lines children there will be the devil to pay has got actually three meanings first you can say that the poet has used this as a metaphor which means that these lines are definitely going to put him into trouble he knew that so inviting trouble the second meaning will be there will be the devil to pay he will have to the person who reads it will have to pay for the consequences after reading it pay for the consequences of reading it and definitely towards the end of the poem we know that both the servant and the person narrator both had to pay a heavy price the servant after reading the poem he felt sick and the master had to attend to this particular sick servant for 10 days and nights okay now so there are three meanings to this particular line there will be the devil to pay another meaning is the poet expects that he would have to pay a lot of money to the printer in order to get his poem printed so see when there is a particular poem as many readers there are many readers if there are 100 readers there can be 100 interpretations of a particular poem so any one of the meanings we can take up either we say that the will be the devil to pay stands for the heavy price or heavy sum or amount of money that the poet will have to shell out to the printer in order to get it printed another meaning is that there is some trouble coming up this particular poem writing this composing these lines means inviting trouble it stands for a metaphor devil here stands for the trouble that is going to come and what was the trouble the composer himself had to attend to his sick servant who became sick after reading this particular poem and the third one is that it's a metaphor inviting trouble okay so these are the three meanings these to the printer i explain and in my humorous way i add it as the trifling jest the will be the devil to pay again the rhyme scheme is a b c b he took the paper and i watched and saw him peep within the servant now while the poet was handing over the poem which he had composed to the servant and asked him to take it to the printer still he couldn't control his laughter so this aroused in the servant's mind an enthusiasm an excitement a curiosity to read the particular poem so what did he do he took the paper and i watched and saw him peep within at first at the first line he read his face was all upon the grin the moment he read the first line he started smiling grinning is smiling he started smiling he took the paper and i watched and saw him peep within at the first line he read his face was all upon the grin he started smiling he gave a broad smile he read the next he read the next the grin grew broad and shot from ear to ear <coughs> that is the smile became a broad broader one and from ear to ear this is a phrase that is generally used when a person smiles too much okay it is shot from ear to ear so his smile broadened he read the next the third line the grin grew broad and shot from 
from ear to ear. He read the third a chuckling noise. Chuckling? Laughing softly. He just started laughing. Smile changed into laughter. He read the third a chuckling noise. I now began to hear. The fourth he broke into a row. The fourth means when he read the fourth line. He broke into a roar. That means gave out a very loud sound of deep, prolonged sound. He broke into a roar. That is, he started laughing loudly. The laughter is compared to a roar. The fifth, his face band split. That was the effect when he read the fifth line. So much he started laughing. That is, waist band split. It broke up. The sixth, he burst, his, he burst five buttons. The shirt that he was wearing, he started laughing in such an uncontrollable manner that five of his buttons burst and tumbled into a pit. He fell on the ground while laughing uncontrollably and then he lost consciousness and tumbled in a pit. He lost consciousness. So, the first line, the second line, the third, up to the sixth line, the reaction of that particular servant. What happened to the servant? When he read the first line, there was a smile on his face. Second line, smile became, grew broader. Third line, there was a chuckling noise heard. Slowly he had started laughing. The fourth, his laughter increased in magnanimity to such a great extent that it is, com it is compared to a roar. The fifth, his face band split. The sixth, his buttons burst. And by the time he finished reading the sixth line, he, had la he started laughing in such an uncontrollable fashion that he fell unconscious. He was rolling on the ground and he fell unconscious. Okay, let us end the poem, then we'll come to the figures of speech children. So, which line suggests that the servant was totally out of control? Yes, the sixth line. The sixth line shows was totally out of control because he had burst five buttons and he tumbled in a pit. What was the outcome of this experience on the poem? Let us see. Let's read, then we'll know what was the outcome. Ten days and nights. With the sleepless eye, I watched that wretched man. He was sick. The effect of reading this particular poem composed by the poet was that 10 days and nights, the poet had to take care. Okay, He couldn't sleep because the servant was sick. I watched that wretched man. Here, wretched here stands for helpless condition, miserable condition. And since I never dare to write as funny as I can. So Oliver Wendell Holmes says that the effect of the outcome of composing these four lines and the outcome of this particular experience of writing this particular ridiculous funny poem was that my servant was sick for 10 days and nights and I decided that henceforth I am not going to compose any poem. Okay? So, let us go back to the poem, children, and uh, we will uh, look into the figures of speech. So, it's a very simple poem, and uh, it is composed artistically, but the central idea of the poem is an irony which talks about too much of anything uh, can have an inverse effect. So, too much of anything, too much of laughter. Laughter is considered to be the best medicine. Laughter is the best medicine. So laughter is very, very important. Laughter can help us to be mentally healthy by relieving us of our stress. People who laugh more are generally healthy. Laughter can helps us to improve our memory. Research proves that it is uh, it relieves us of our stress. It's a natural exercise and uh, it keeps us fresh and active. And therefore, laughter clubs have come up at different places. Laughter therapy is also very popular. Okay. So, but too much of anything is bad. That is what the poet is trying to convey. Here. Okay. The result of it was that the creator or the person who composed the poem and the reader both suffered in different ways due to the ridiculous nature of the poem. That's why the title of the poem is The Height of the Ridiculous. To what extent was the effect 
of that particular poem on the servant and the poet so much so that the poet decided that henceforth i am not going to compose any poem at all okay let's uh, there are lots of figures of speech children here uh, the warming up activity here is related to the syllable and i will be taking it up uh, when we do vocabulary that time i will deal with this part it is related to the warming up section of this particular poem so let's now take up the figures of speech the first line i wrote some lines once on a time in a wondrous merry mood i wrote some lines once on a time inversion it should start with once upon a time i wrote some lines so first one is first line is inversion once upon a time i wrote some lines the poet said i wrote some lines once on a time in wondrous merry mood wondrous and merry both almost have the same meaning wondrous delightful merry happy wondrous again can be a delightful another word can be synonym can be happy so therefore wondrous merry mood mood state of mind wondrous merry mood wondrous and merry almost have the same meaning so tautology words two words that have almost the same meaning both the words are used in order to emphasize a particular idea wondrous merry is delightful so here it is tau the next one the next figure of speech and thought as usual men would say and thought as usual men would say they were exceeding good here you have exceeding extremely they were so cured so very cured word cure is repeated for emphasis so it is repetition i laughed as i would die hyperbole or hyperbole okay so much so he has exaggerated overstated the particular idea that he thought that he would die after laughing so much so i laughed as i would die albert in a general way a sober man am i i am a sober man sober clear headed and serious i am a sober man again inversion okay inversion first stanza again rhyme scheme i'm repeating a b c b the same rhyme scheme has been followed throughout the poem by the poet first line inversion second line tautology in a wondrous merry mood second stanza first line they were so cured so very cured again repetition i laughed as i would die hyperbole over exaggerated statement a sober man am i i am a sober man a sober man am i in version let's go ahead i called my servant and he came alliteration called and came sound of the letter please repeat it how kind it was of him in order to just make the words rhyme with each other the poet has used inversion how kind it was of him him and limb has to rhyme so how kind it was of him so inversion it was very kind of him how kind it was of him to mind a slender man like me slender small and slim of the mighty limb when you take both the lines together it will be antithesis slender and mighty slender <laughs> tiny thin slim mighty one who is of a physically heavy build mighty limb and in a humorous way i added as trifling jest jest again stands for simple joke humorous again in a joking way so that which makes us laugh just also something that makes you laugh okay a simple small joke so therefore again it will be tautology when you take both the lines together
at the first line he read his face was all upon the grin at the first line he read his face was all upon the was all upon the grin okay he started smiling grin smile he read the next his grin grew broad grin grew sound of the letter g is repeated alliteration grin short from year to year again hyperbole he read the third a chuckling noise i now began to hear here it can be onomatopoeia chuckling sound is indicated by the word i now began to hear i began to hear it now again inversion lot of inversion has been used in the poem the fourth he began into a road he broke into a road again onomatopoeia sound is indicated by the word road the fifth is space band split the sixth is he burst five buttons and tumbled in a fit all of them are hyperbole the poet has exaggerated the effect of the poem okay the effect that the poem had on his servant so inversion and hyperbole these are the two important predominant figures of speech that are being used by the poet in the last uh, four lines you have Ten days and nights with sleepless eye. Ten days and nights. Days and nights. Antithesis. Ten days and nights. Again, hyperbole. Ten days and nights. How can someone be without sleeping? Okay, with the sleep, with sleepless eye. Again, an important figure of speech. What we have learned previously. Transferred epithet. Epithet means adjective. When an adjective is placed before another noun to which it has no connection, it is called transferred. Transferred from one adjective and placed before another noun to which it has no connection, it is called transferred epithet. Sleepless eye. It is not the eye that is sleepless. It is the person, the poet, and the servant both didn't sleep. Right? Ten days and nights with sleepless eye. Transferred epithet. Cynic dosh. Eye stands for the entire body. Okay. It's not the eye that only sleeps, but here it stands for the entire body, so part for the whole. I watch that wretched man. Alliteration. Sound of the letter W is repeated. Again, as funny as I can. Repetition. A very simple poem, but lots of figures of speech are used, and uh, the poet has really uh, the visual imagery which is used in the poem is very very good. Each one of us has imagined imagined uh, the slender poet handing over the poem to the servant who is well built, and how that particular person keeps laughing and he is rolling on the ground. Everybody has got an image of uh, what would have happened, and here, of course, a uh, image is already given, and so very good visual imagery has been used by the poet. That is, he has built up an image using words. It's called visual imagery. So the poem is known for it. So there is a very good visual imagery. That's the positive aspect of the poem. Simple poem composed very artistically. Rhyme scheme is A B C D. It's a poem which is written in a very light mood, or you can say that it's a humorous poem. Okay, yet it brings home the idea that anything in excess is bad, and effect of the poem on the poet. And his servant who read the poem composed by the poet. Okay, and um, here you have um, in the activity you have rhyming words. Form pairs and find out various rhyming words in the poem and uh, write two of your own. Here, here, you can have here, there, 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 within, grin, chin, pin, sin, begin. Man, can, pan, pan, ran. Okay, it is the sound which is more important, more than spelling. The sound which is more important when you when you talk about rhyming words. Split, fit, hit, sit. Way, pay, sway, delay. Him, limb, dim, slim. Die, I, cry, buy, shy. Mood. Good, rude, hood, hood. So these are some of the rhyming words. 
then order of sequence arrange the reaction arrange the following reactions in a proper order as per the poem so you can number it as 1 2 3 4 5 instead of a b c d up to f and what will be the uh, reaction was all upon the grin the first reaction after reading the first line was he started smiling was all upon the grin then the second one will be his grin grew broad then you have he broke into a roar then the next one will be his waistband split is yes, his five buttons burst off and lastly sleepless eye so the uh, first activity which is present here this activity find out expressions from the poem that indicate funny moments here i want you to put a capital b children and read up this or take a note of all those lines which indicate funny moments first one is i added as the trickling jest that can be one uh, funny moment his grin grew broad and short from year to year that can be another line he broke into a roar he burst five buttons and tumbled in a fit another funny moment can be 10 days and nights with sleepless eye i watched that rich man that can again be a uh, an expression from the poem that indicates funny so children we uh, have the figures of speech here the next activity very important here again i want to to read the figures of speech and to the same table the master column you can add some more of it which we have discussed Uh, but it, it's not given here so in a wondrous merry mood wondrous and merry both are uh, similar have similar meaning so it will be tautology they were cured so very cured stands for repetition and saw him peep within saw him peep within what does it come up as peep within peep and saw stands for this almost the same meaning is there so they could again tautology the grin grew broad the grin grew broad again alliteration sound of letter g is repeated short from year to year repetition broke into a roar sound is indicated for onomatopoeia 10 days and nights with sleepless eye transferred epithet so there are lots of examples of inversion in the poem hyperbole and inversion hyperbole inversion repetition almost every second line you have a figure of speech in the poem but yet a simple poem uh, which is being composed by the poet we come to the end of the session here children and uh, the meanings and the figure of speech and here the expressions of the poem that indicate funny moment this is what you have to uh, know very well okay and uh, of course the uh, poem appreciation about the poet two sentences you can write about the poet title of the poem the name of the poet Uh, figures of speech. When you write that these are the prominent figures of speech, predominant figures of speech, figures of speech used in the poem, do make a mention of uh, two examples of hyperbole, one or two examples of repetition, okay, from the poem, and the tautology. Uh, you have three examples of tautology: alliteration, repetition, hyperbole, and the transferred epithet is also used. Cynic dosh is also uh, is used in the particular poem. Okay, so we come to the end of the session, children. here the warming up session where you have information about the syllable that i will be taking up when we do vocabulary okay thank you very much children uh you have been given printed notes i want you to go through the printed notes and uh, uh, take note of all the uh, word meanings and the figures of speech and start preparing uh, well for your exams okay thank you children have a good